Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making this really simple American picket fence flag to hang on the side of our house. So stick around and I'll show you guys how to do this. So to start out, you can buy fence pickets and choose whichever style you want. We actually went with a different style. We cut our own pickets for our front picket fence. We just installed that a couple weeks ago. So I'm gonna make this one to match our front picket fence as well. So I started out with these six foot dog-eared cedar boards for fencing. And I'm gonna rip these down the middle. I decided to go with cedar boards for two reasons mainly. One, pressure treated has to dry and cure before you can paint it. So I didn't wanna have to worry about that. So I went with cedar. Plus cedar is a lot lighter than pressure treated. So this will make it a lot easier. Once I build the flag, I can easily lift it up myself, hang it on the wall without any trouble at all. So once I have those ripped down the middle, I'm gonna set up a fence to cut all of these at a five foot length. And I also have my saw cutting at a 45 degree angle. I'll cut one side, flip it over, cut the other side, and that will give me a perfect point on top of all of these pickets. Now you can actually look up a picture of the American flag if you want to make it accurate, if you don't remember how many stars and stripes there are on the flag. But there are 13 stripes, so I'm going to be cutting out 13 of these pickets that will work perfectly for the flag. Once I have those 13 cut, I'll lay those out side by side and see how tall this is. I cut them all at 5 foot long and measuring all of them when they're cut down the middle with 13 of them in a row, it's almost exactly 3 feet. Now I'll take a few strips of wood, cut those at three feet for the back to tie everything together. Now to hang this, I'm actually going to be using a French cleat system to hang this on the wall. It's a lot easier than trying to put screws through the flag into brick siding. So what you need to do is cut two boards at 45 degree angles and those will fit perfectly into each other. And I'll show you how this works in a little bit. Now we have all the pieces of wood cut out, ready to go. We need to paint and then we'll assemble the flag. So my wife's gonna be helping me paint the red stripes. There are seven red stripes and six white stripes. That equals 13 in all. So we're gonna go through and paint all of these before we start assembling. That makes it a whole lot easier than having to tape off the different boards and trying not to mess up the other color while we're painting. Now, if you have not seen the update video I posted on the channel last week, there's a lot of really cool updates that I was sharing with you guys. It was the two year anniversary of starting my YouTube channel. It's grown a ton and you guys have been amazing. So thanks for watching, helping and supporting the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting on my videos. Other piece of exciting news that we shared was that my wife and I are expecting another girl coming this February. So we're really excited about that and want to share it with you guys as well. Now we'll get back to painting. We're just about finished and so far it's looking good. Now as the pickets are drying, I'm going to pre-drill a few holes that we'll be using for screwing all the pickets together from the back side. Now right here you can see all the pieces we're using. Two will go on either side. Those are the vertical pieces from top to bottom, three foot long. And then we have a, a longer piece going diagonally from one side to the other. This will keep the whole piece from going out of square and one side sagging more than the other. And we'll be attaching all these together with one inch long screws that will go through both of the boards just barely not poking out the other side. So this will work out perfectly. And then we're going to be putting two screws on each of these pickets on the vertical pieces as well as the diagonal piece. Now before you get started by screwing everything together, take some time to make sure you have everything laid out where you want it. Make sure that the pickets and the frame are all square or else this is going to look pretty wonky when you're done and it's all crooked.
Now at the top, you'll notice I'm screwing in the French cleat system board that I cut. This has a 45 degree angle on it and you'll want that angle to face downwards towards the bottom of the flag. And this will hook right into the board that we're gonna be screwing onto the wall. Now before we do that, I need to paint the blue solid piece on the flag. I'm gonna use some tape, tape this out and put some plastic down over the flag because there will be some overspray. We're using some spray paint to do this and it'll go really quick. So we'll tape this off and then paint it and get started with the stars after this. Now for the spray paint, I'm just gonna be using Rust-Oleum Gloss Paint. It doesn't really matter what type of spray paint you use as long as it is that navy blue that you use on an American flag. So this will look really nice, a rich dark blue that when it's all painted over, it'll take several coats to completely cover the white and red stripes. Once that's done, we can move on to the next step. Now, as that paint's drying, I'm gonna start cutting out the stencil that we're gonna use for all the stars. Instead of trying to use a paintbrush and hand painting all of these stars that would take forever, or trying to use some sort of stencil, we're gonna actually cut out this sponge and use this sponge as the template for all of these stars. Now I have the star ready to go. Now all I need to do is measure out and make sure I can fit the right number of stars inside this blue box. Now in order to reach the correct number of 50 stars inside this blue box, you need to do a row of six across the top and then you continue that row four more times down below that. So you'll have five rows of six. So five times six is 30, and then you'll need to fill in 20 more. And to do this, you just find each group of four and put a star smack dab in the middle of that, and that will give you 20 more stars equaling 50 in total. So I'm just gonna lay out my grid pattern for the five rows of six stars going across. And then I'll come back. I don't need any dots marking the middle because I can just eyeball that afterwards to fill in the rest. Now it's time to start painting the stars. And to do this, I've taken a small plate and poured a tiny bit of white paint on there. And what I'm doing is dipping the sponge star that I've already cut out onto that plate with paint on it and then you'll just lightly set it down on top where the point is that you've already laid out on the flag and press that down onto the wood. You don't wanna squish it too hard or it applies way too much paint. So once you have a group of four, again, like I mentioned before, you just put one star right in the middle and that will give you the right number of stars once you're all done. So five rows of six, and then you just fill in in between each group of four, you'll put a star right in the middle. Now, if you make any mistakes, feel free to touch that up with a small paintbrush, or you can just reapply the sponge with a little bit more paint to cover up any mistakes you make. Here is the last star that's 50 in total. Now we just need to let this paint dry a little bit and then we can hang it up. Before it's ready to hang, I first need to attach the other piece of the French cleat onto the wall. And I'm gonna be attaching this with a 45 degree angle facing up and tilted towards the house. That way it will hook in and pull it towards the house and hold it where it needs to be. Now I'll be mounting this to the wall with four screws that I'm drilling out into the brick. I'll put in plastic tabs and that will give me something to screw to through this wood into the wall. 
Now it's very important to get that board that you screw to the wall in the correct place and level because this is going to be impacting where the flag is going to go. And if you have that incorrectly, you're going to definitely notice after the flag is hung. And you can see here how easy it is with this when it's done right. You can easily hang it and take it down just as easy when you need to. Now it just about started raining right as we were hanging this up. Thankfully we finished just in time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that like button down below and let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button. That way YouTube will recommend my videos to you and you won't miss out on any content I post. Thanks guys for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.